Welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. My name's Jim. You can find us at babyboomertales.com. Once you've arrived at our webpage, you can find a link to buy our book, find our YouTube channel, our Boomer's General Store, and many links where to hear Baby Boomer Tales podcast. Let me recommend an episode from May of 2019. It's episode 14, titled Gallup, New Mexico. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. Our housekeeping issue today is last week's podcast episode. I talked about having too much to drink and I beat up the dashboard of my pickup truck in a fit of stupidity. And I just want to make a couple issues clear here. I'm not the type that takes out my frustration on inanimate objects or animate objects. I'm just not that way. I don't put my fist through the wall or any of that. This was an isolated incident that I'm not proud of even a little bit. I talked about it and exposed it because I wanted to expose what alcohol can do to a person, I guess. Anyway, I just wanted you to know that the cat's safe. I'm not going to kick the cat if I'm mad at the wife or, you know, whatever. I don't even have a cat anymore. But I've never kicked the cat. Thank goodness I'm not wired like that. If you have issues like that, don't deny them. Get some help, please. Do yourself a favor. Do the ones that love you a favor. Onward and upward here. Uh, Another issue on the house cleaning I've got to clean up is the episode before last episode, two weeks ago. We uh, talked about the generation that's most likely to take a selfie. And I said something about millennials but then I said their age was about 25 the average age of a selfie taker but millennials are the biggest selfie takers there are well I try to find where I got that 25 year old and I can't find it but I did find in several places saying the millennials do the most selfies so I know that Munchies jumped in there and tried to correct it and listening back it was a little bit confusing Maybe that's just because of the munchies. They can bring a little confusion. But I screwed up somewhere. I contradicted some ages in there. Not a big deal, I know. But I had to clean it up. That's what housekeeping is for. So those are the two issues I just wanted to bring out and expose. Even more than they were exposed when I did them. Our unusual fact this week. The Guinness World Record for Longest Hair was by a lady from China. Let me try to say her name. Zi Quingping. I'm sure I said that wrong, and I apologize for that. In May of 2004, her hair was measured at 18 feet, 5 and a half inches. She had been growing it since 1973. I just got my hair cut last week. It been about six, seven, eight weeks since I'd had a haircut. Way too long, but it seems to be the time I go between haircuts, six to eight weeks. And it's always all fuzzy with this gray hair situation that I deal with anymore. It doesn't just lay down, it just kind of sticks out you know, this way, that way. It kind of reminds me of, we have ornamental grasses around here. They're really pretty in the spring and summer. And we let them just go dormant in the winter. We don't cut them down in the fall. We don't do that until spring. So we have these grasses that kind of go everywhere. And they're, you know, they're dead and they're gnarly. And by the end of winter, you wished you would have cut them down in the fall. But that's what my hair's like anymore. So I go and see my barber. And I really get along good with my barber. And now he's been my barber for possibly 15, 16, 17 years now. I feel very fortunate I found a barber that I can go to and I know he's going to be there. The reason I know he's going to be there though, since the big lockdown of 2020 in that era, 
He went to appointment only. I thought I would hate that. Well, I love it. Uh, now I can call him and say, Merlin, how about 10.30 today? And he'll say, well, 10.30's open, but 11's okay, or 10. I'll go, how about 11? I'll be there at 11. And I go, I get there, I walk in, he cuts my hair, and I leave. And there's no sitting around waiting in the waiting room. He still has a waiting room with magazines and newspapers and all that stuff. But nobody's there now. It's far superior. It used to be you didn't know what you're going to get. You know, you walk in, you don't know if you'd be the first one in line or if you have to wait for a half an hour or longer. So I want to go through some of my barbers in my lifetime, the ones that are memorable to me. I've talked about barbers before, and I'm going to start with my Uncle Cliff. He is the first barber I was really aware of. I'm sure I started getting my hair cut there at a very young age. He had a nice barber shop right there in town, right next door to Payne's Cafe. It was a three-chair barber shop, which he always had at least two chairs going. I do remember a few times where he had three chairs, but I think what would happen in a small town like that was three chairs might have been too many, and he had to pay a barber that maybe they weren't that busy, where two chairs, they were busy all the time. He was busy all the time. Everybody got their hair cut every two weeks, and it was a busy barber shop. When I was little, I was always told to sit still, stop squirming around, and all of that, you know, the hair get down the back of my neck, and I tried to scratch it, and I'd talk, and I'd look around, and I'd, you know, point at something, and Jimmy, just be still. I got old enough where I could go in there by myself without my mom or my dad sitting there with me. And I'd sit and read comic books. And I remember he had these true detective magazines there. He had about six or seven chairs there with magazines and stuff while he waited for a haircut. On the back of it was Charles Atlas. And, you know, you skinny guy saying... They used to kick sand in my face, but now I took Charles Atlas' course and I'm muscle-bound. These muscle-bound guys, muscles that didn't even look real, you know? Cliff was my barber for years and years. Well, 1964, the British invasion happened, I do believe, with the Beatles. And growing long hair got on my radar and I started growing my bangs a little longer. By the time I was 16, my uncle and I were in a cold war, for lack of a better description of it. I didn't want to get my hair cut. I voiced my displeasure and how the world was a terrible place if you didn't like long hair. Of course, my uncle was trying to make a living. And people were going from every two weeks to all of a sudden they were growing their hair a little bit over their ears and stuff about 1967 or so. And we did have some battles, and I was made to go to my Uncle Cliff. I'm sure he'd have rather I'd stayed away. I was a selfish young man, not even thinking that he was trying to pay his house mortgage and feed his kids and all that stuff. Eventually, when I was about in my very early 20s, Cliff got sick, and he ended up dying. And I remember going to my grandma's house. I just walked down there myself. I don't know why I didn't drive. I probably didn't have a car at that time. And Uncle Cliff was staying there at grandma's by then. And he came out and we spoke. I remember shaking hands with him when he first came out. And I was shocked. He was just a skeleton by then. He had cancer, I believe. And in my heart, I forgave him. I hope he forgave me. Really, there was nothing for me to forgive except for that he was a barber and I wanted long hair. And yet I was bitter towards the man. And you know what? Through all the years of all the barbers and hairdressers and all that stuff, people that cut my hair, my Uncle Cliff was the only person of all those dozens and dozens of folks. He was the only one that ever loved me. I'm glad we made amends before he passed away. I know he's the best barber I ever had. My barber today, old Merlin, he's a good barber, he is. But I don't think any of them could hold a pair of scissors to my Uncle Cliff.
Let me go through a few of them though, because I plowed through lots of them. My favorite one, my little hometown, after I got older and got married and started getting haircuts again, was a girl named Sandy. Well, I've talked about Sandy before. Very good barber. She was a hairdresser down the street, but she'd come up to my office at my store and cut my hair in my office. Talk 100 miles an hour. Used to freak me out a little bit until I got used to it. She gave a good haircut, and I always appreciated her. Besides Sandy, it was hard for me to find a place to get a haircut up there. It really was. When I moved to Kansas, though, I found a place in the city, and it was okay. They gave okay haircuts. Then I moved to that little town outside the city that my kids called their hometown. And there's a guy named Sandy there. And he cut my hair for several years, and one day the place was closed. Went back a couple weeks later, and still closed. So I started asking around, and old Sandy had just died. Well, that would never do, would it? That would never do at all. Well, there's a guy named Jack that opened a barber shop a couple blocks down the street, and I started going to him, and he was okay, but wasn't the same. I started going all around to some of these hair places that they advertise, you know, that your hair will look great and all this, and all they are is kind of a beauty shop, barber shop hybrid. No guys were cutting your hair, they're always girls. And I used to have a guy I worked with, he said he would never let a guy cut his hair anyway, he just wanted women rubbing his head. And I said, the guys know what type of haircut you want to have. Well, I did finally find a barber down what I call the big town south of us. Problem there is, though, I'd walk in the place. There was always about eight people in front of you. You'd have to wait an hour or two to get a haircut. It was terrible. It was terrible. So I finally gave that up. There was a guy in the little town I lived by. His shop's still there, but he was an old codger back then. He gave $4 haircut. I don't know if it's him still there or if it's someone else. But the barber shop's still open. I ought to go in and look in the door, at least see if it's old Mel. Well, finally, I got tired of going to these beauty shops and stuff, never having the same girl cut your hair twice, stuff like that. And I found old Merlin. Now Merlin's been cutting my hair, like I said, 17 years, something like that. He's a good guy, still a good barber. We're growing old together. He used to have baseball games going in the summertime on TV, but TV's just dark now. He doesn't want to pay the cable bill. Don't blame him at all. I don't blame him at all. But I do like that situation where you have to make the appointment. My grandpa was a barber back in Nebraska. You go there, those farmers, on a Saturday night, take a bath, have a haircut, shoe shine. I have a spit tune, I believe, from his old barber shop. That was a different era. By the time I knew Grandpa, he had a grocery store and gave up barbering. To my knowledge, he never cut my hair. I had my wife cut it one time, and I thought she was going to have a nervous breakdown. She screwed it up so bad. But she had a friend that was a beautician. She called her in between all the sobs. She explained to her that she run her husband's hair and will she please come fix it. I talked about this one time. She brought her husband, George, with her. He looked at me and says, My God, man, looks like you have the mange. Kim never cut my hair since then. Once in a while, I'll take some thinning shears to my hair. You know, it's thick on the sides and thin in the front. But I still have hair. But it's all that gray stuff sticking everywhere. Just like those ornamental grasses that have been dead all winter. I just want to say publicly that I appreciate my Uncle Cliff. I love the man. Never get in a fight with someone you love and who loves you. And let that thing fester and grow and go on a long period of time, so long that you've forgotten what caused the rift between the two of you. Be quick, be quick. Be so, so quick to forgive and ask for forgiveness. Does it matter who's right or wrong? Does it? It doesn't matter. Always be kind. There's no better way to be. I'll be back next Wednesday. Thanks for riding along today. Peace out.